Lesser Light by Matthew Draper. Chapter Five. Grumples was waiting for me on return to the house. They don't meow. They just make little beeping sounds, like an electric car backing into a parking space. If you give them a gentle poke in the belly with the right timing, they might even be able to beep along to a tune. Meep meep, the cat squeaked as I squeezed through the door, caught between two huge bags of groceries. A last-minute attempt to fill up on Christmassy snacks, nibbles, and cheese. I hadn't noticed when I got in last night, but Rocco had spent the night before putting up Christmas decorations while I was away at my friend's wedding party. He worked for a gas company and was on call all the way up to Christmas, and had not been able to come with me to the event yesterday. Obviously, making the most of his time without me, he had strung tinsel from every corner of the house. Strings of iridescent colour crisscrossed the ceilings, dangled from the banister, and flowed across the mantelpiece above the fireplace in our living room. Gold, silver, and every gaudy shade you can imagine gleamed and bobbed, rustling gently around me. Scrumples had managed to catch at least one string and demolished it at the foot of the stairs. I swept up the shredded remains into a dustpan before unpacking my food supplies into cupboards. Wandering the supermarket in a daze, I had attempted to follow Dylan's advice, to listen to my body, to treat myself with dignity and desire. Discounted chocolate oranges had piled up in the shopping cart. I set about preparing a Christmas Eve dinner. Miniature new potatoes were dusted with olive oil and molden sea salt and roasted in the oven. Carrots drizzled with hot butter, mustard, and honey. Leeks were bathed in a cheese sauce whisked from a homemade roux, and three types of grated cheese. Pigs in blankets crisped in the oven. Streaky bacon coiled around chipolata sausages, pierced with spikes of rosemary. Sizzling oil and meat juices were tipped from the roast pan into gravy, thickened to pour. Slices of lamb cooked pink. Christmas songs piped from the radio when Rocco arrived home from work. On Christmas Eve, he always spray-dyed his hair blue, a tradition he had started as a joke on having a blue Christmas the year before he met me. But it had become a yearly staple, and everyone who worked with him expected it for the last day's work of the year. Dinner was served, the fire set, and an evening of Christmas Eve bliss was had. Soft kisses by the fireplace countdown to Santa's arrival. Look, that was the plan. Instead, Rocco walked in, blue hair and bright smile, to be greeted by scenes of a disaster. And it all started when the Archangel Gabriel showed up. Tipping the boiling new potatoes into a colander, steam billowed. The softened mini potatoes hissed as they hit hot oil in a baking tray. I had made it through the process of chopping, cleaning, and preparing all the vegetables in peace, with Christmas tunes accompanying my unhurried actions. But as everything cooked with different times, temperatures, and expectations, I began to feel my panic rising. Could I make a perfect meal? Heat blasted out the open oven door as I slid the tray of potatoes inside, on the hob. Carrots boiled uncontrollably, adding to the haze of steam and heat filling the room. As water bubbled over the edge of the pan and hissed against the electric hob tub, I sensed a presence moving above me. Emerging from one of the spotlights on the ceiling, each individual bony, clawed finger at a time. Like a spider returning up from the bath plug after you've washed it away, two strong arms pushed free from the lamp in the ceiling and crawled towards me, dragging their body out behind them as I turned horrified from the stove. 
grey dust trickled on to the floor tiles as the creature moved above me, popping through bands of tinsel, snapping at the tape that held it up. Ribbons of tinsel fell around me, and the angel lowered itself until his elongated feet were stood on the floor. Almost human, but with pale skin covered in cracks and caked in dust, the angelic being was taller than me at full height. His gigantic wings creaked open wide. Though he had a round head and eyes, there was no mouth, and the words he used seemed to come from deep within me. You will fail. It had been years since I last saw him this closely. I was frozen in place. I could not reach for my weapons because I had long since given them up. If I fight, I will fail. The angel drew closer, his head swinging widely to the left and right, searching every surface in the room and finishing up with his face inches from my own. I could feel the vacuum of ice cold that surrounds him brushing against my cheeks. You do not deserve good things, the voice was back. You can never truly be filled with joy. You give glory to yourself and not to God. You are faithless. It is because of you your friend is dead. The door burst open and a cheery rocco erupted through. Jingle, jingle, merry, huh? I didn't know how much time had passed. Strings of tinsel hung from the ceiling, the carrots had boiled dry, spirals of smoke coughed from the corners of the oven door, and there were empty pans and knives and plastic pots of peelings everywhere. I was crouched in the corner of the kitchen, my head in my hands. Harry, what? Are you okay? Rocco crossed the room in one bound, tucking his arms around me. What are you trying to do? I failed. Rocco kissed me on the top of my head and was up again, swiping the cindered potatoes out of the oven and slinging the whole tray out into the garden, where it could smoke to its heart's content without setting off the fire alarm. Dropping the inedible lamb into the sink and switching on the water. Apparently, I had left the plastic wrap on. The whole thing was moments from turning into a burnt sacrifice. Soggy carrots were swiftly rehomed in the bin along with their peelings. Next, he was up on a stepladder, sticking tinsel back to the ceiling. Tape never works well with tinsel. The steam must have unstuck it all. Don't worry, it's fine, it's fine. As he moved with grace, sweeping, cleaning, wiping, he never stopped reassuring me that everything was okay. I was just going to cook us something simple tonight anyway. He slid a couple of frozen pizza boxes out of the freezer. You didn't have to go to all that trouble. It's the ghost of Christmas past, not the roast of Christmas past. Eventually, I began to smile and laugh at myself for having been so ridiculous as to attempt something so huge with no forward planning on Christmas Eve. Rocco scooped up Scrumples and dumped them into my arms. Look how much Scrumples loves you, he said. Though, to be honest, the cat did not look impressed and attempted to escape immediately. Later, when the pizzas were cooked and we were settled in front of the fire with a Christmas special episode of a quiz show playing on TV. I could convince myself. I didn't see Gabriel here in our home today, and had simply tried to do too much too soon. But when I looked at my phone, I had six missed calls from Sebastian, and there was a text message that said, He wants you back. Lesser Light is an online event. Head to lesserlight.blog to join in the comment section or share this story on Facebook, Twitter, Hive or your favourite social media platform. The Lesser Light paperback is available from lulu.com or other booksellers or you can download the ebook now. But remember, no spoilers until New Year's Day. The story is fictional, but if the elements about trauma, cults or recovery have affected you, you can find helplines at lesserlight.blog.